You, you don't need interpretation? No. Okay, we trust the Holy Spirit will take the words like the hula, like the rain, yes. and just touch the soil. You know what I like about the Mbeu? It understands the language of the rain. The seed yeah. understands the language of the rain. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we are such a, uh, it's such an honor for us to be with you, Pastor Lawrence and Brother Dan. Thank you so much for each one of you welcoming us here. I have not been here for a long time with you. I used to come with my wife. She's here, but she's in the camp at the moment. She sends her regards uh, with uh, Brother Ezrom. Remember Brother Ezrom? Yes. He used to come here. And uh, is Charmaine? Is Charmaine still in the shop? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just mm -hmm. met her now there in the shop. I remember her from way back that time. But um, we, are, we have some friends here from all over the world, from uh, Singapore right at the back there, from America, from Canada, and uh, my wife and I, we are now, we used to live near Cape Town, now we live a little bit further away near Otsuren. And uh, we, we are translating the Mirror Bible, I was sharing with Pastor Lawrence now, that we were here at the tented camp, five kilometers from here at Tambuti, in 2007, I think it was, towards the end of 2007, for one month. And we did the book of Hebrews, and I write in the introduction there a little bit about our experience in the game reserve and how blessed we are to come into this sanctuary called the Kruger National Park. You know, many of our friends from America, it's their first time to encounter this kind of vastness and this kind of um, authentic bush experience. Because in America, you have many of the animals that we have here, but they are in cages. And there's a big difference between an animal in a cage and an animal who's run, running free. You know, so to come here and say, ah, oh, look at that lamiti there, and then dove, and slump, and dove, and ice. You know, it's just, it's just too much. Sometimes, when we are, this morning, we, we saw two ingwe, two leopard. And, and it's not safe to see some tears in the eyes because it is overwhelming. You know, um, I, I always tell the story. Of my wife and I, you know, we have four children. All four of our children were born in Pumalanga, in Nelspreit, mm -hmm. not far from here. And we used to go very often to the Kruger National Park. We love, love the bush so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife and I, we met in 1974. Wow. That's many, many years ago. You know, we're yeah. at now. <laughs> and I remember when we were in, on our honeymoon, we were here in Blyther River Canyon. We are going with our team to Blyther River Canyon in a few days' time. And Lydia and I, we were there, we were having our honeymoon in Blyde River Canyon. Yeah. And we go to Burke's Luck, you know all those areas. Yeah. And we meet one of the conservation ladies. And she told us that one week ago, this was now in January 1979, when we got married. Just, just early in January, before our, we were there, they said they released a black eagle. You know the black eagle? Yeah. It's, it's got a big wingspan, yeah. more than two meters. Yeah. And this eagle was in the zoo in Pretoria for 10 years. And we know that zoos, they can build big cages, but not big enough. Because that bird is not designed to be in a cage. It's designed for freedom. And after 10 years, the authorities decided we will release this eagle back into its original environment. So they brought this eagle, they arranged everything, the date was set, they arranged everything to come all the way from Pretoria. The bird was put in a, in a wooden box. Mm -hmm. This eagle didn't know what was happening to him. He was just saying, what is going on? What's going on with all these people, you know? And so they cut this box, maybe five, six hours travel from Pretoria to, to, uh, to Kraskop, to Berksluck. And early in the morning, they put the box on the edge there of that canyon. They opened the gate. Everybody, they were so excited. Because they know that this eagle is not going back into that cage. Mm -hmm. He's going into his freedom. Mm -hmm. So they are so excited. And they, wow, this is the moment for the eagle. But the eagle is just sitting there. 
with sleepy eyes. Mm. <laughs> this, this, this eagle doesn't understand but that he's free. Yeah. But he's free. Mm. All the documents were stamped there in Pretoria at the zoo. Mm. They did not steal the, the eagle. Mm. He was officially free. Mm. But he did not understand his freedom. Mm. So even though he was here in this beautiful place, on this mountain here, on the other side of Marivsko, he was sitting there, but he did not see his own freedom. Mm -hmm. But he was free. Mm -hmm. But his mind was still in the cage. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. So many of us, <coughs> the world in fact, the entire world, when Jesus rose from the dead, the stone was rolled away. Mm -hmm. We did not ask permission. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5, While we were still dead in our sins, God raised us. He made us alive together with Christ. Yeah. You see, those are the most important words in the Bible. Because I can read the Bible many, many times. But, it, you know, sometimes I read these scriptures and it's the various there. I don't see my own freedom. Yeah. Oh, I see beautiful things about Jesus and about the disciples and about the apostles and about the old prophets. And I say, oh, hey, it is beautiful. But the beauty of this Bible is the stone was rolled away. Mm. When Jesus was raised from the dead, yeah. mm. we were raised together with him. Yeah. Yeah. You see, something happened to the human race. They did not know. Yeah. Something happened to us when Jesus died. Yeah. He did not die his own death. Yeah. He died our death. Yeah. Yeah. When he went to hell, he did. Where, where were we when Jesus went to hell? Where were we? Yeah. We were in him. You know when we watch, I remember one day we were preaching here nearby. Remind me of the eagle story because I want to finish it. Still. But not far from here, there's, I think it's Kingfisher, that camp. You remember that small camp? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we were preaching there one night, my wife and I, we went to Kingfisher camp. Just a small camp, a small group of people. And when we got there, there was one man, he had pirates, pirates jersey on. Another man, he had chiefs jersey on. I said, oh, you know, as humans, we are small groups, but we are still divided. Yeah. Because we've got Kaiser chiefs this side, we've got pirates that side, so we've got problems. I said, but let's for tonight we put Bafana Bafana Jesus on. Because we are one, we are together. Let's not worry about who is who from what from from what football team. But you know the thing about football? When you are represented in your team, when they score the goal, that goal belongs to you. Even though you only see it on TV. Maybe you don't have TV, but you hear it on the radio. Maybe you're not even there to listen to the radio. You're somewhere in the Shlatin doing some business. You come back one week later. Oh, the game is finished. I missed that Pirates game or that Chiefs game. But I hear the result. Mm -hmm. And if it's my team who is the victor, I jabula. Yeah. Because I feel I was represented in that team. Yeah. When they scored the goal, it was my goal. Yes. But I wasn't even there. Yeah. I did not even see it. But I hear the good news that my team won. So I'm so jabula because I feel represented. Yeah. The beauty about the good news you know when is good news good news? When it's good news! <laughs> it's not bad news. If it's good news, it's good news. Yeah. The power of the good news is that you and I, we are one. We are included in Jesus. Amen. You see, the, I love the way John writes, you know. When he starts writing his mandala, he's almost 90 years old. He writes in John 1 verse 1. He doesn't go and see who was whose father, who was whose grandfather like Matthew and Luke. He says, in the beginning... The Word was God. Mm -hmm. And the Word was face to face with God. Yeah. You see in the Greek language, you'll see it in the Mirror Bible. I use the Greek language, I bring it out. It is translated also in Kosa and in Shona, not yet in Shangan. We need to get it in Shangan. <laughs> and in Spanish, many other languages. But the Word is face to face with God. <coughs> because this Word, he says in verse 14, was made flesh. The destiny of the Word of God is not the book. I love the Bible. But the Word was not meant to stay in the page. It was meant to become flesh. In our skin. Jesus came to reveal something. He came to reveal what? Colossians 1.15 He is the image of who? Of the invisible God. So that means when we see Jesus, God cannot be invisible anymore. Jesus says, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Amen. So the invisible God, He comes into our time. Mm. You know, tonight, we are, what year are we now in? 2017. How? It's already seven years past the FIFA World Cup. Yeah. 
in South Africa. Seven years. But what happened 17,000, uh, uh, 2007, 17 years ago? When, when the living invisible God, he came to, to planet Earth. He needed the passport. You know when the tourists come here into the Kruger National Park, they can't just drive in. They need to have the permit. When they have permit, they can see everything that's here. Yeah. I've been here watching the Ingwe, and I watch the Ingwe, and I see other people that are just driving past. I say, whoa, 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 there's Ingwe here. Hey, but they don't see, but they have the same permit, but they don't see what I see. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So many times, we, 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 we have the permit, but we don't enjoy what we can enjoy. So, um, 2017 years ago, the password of Jesus was his mother's womb. Mm. He was born in human body. Mm. You see, when Paul, when Paul begins to think about these things, his mind goes, Zoo! he writes in Colossians 2, he says, verse 9, he says, the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells, pagati, in Jesus. Jesus didn't come, you know, and say to the people, oh, you know, I'm just here representing my father, but um, my father is far away, and he's an angry boss, you know, and he's just watching. No, no, no. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Amen. He came to reveal the father. Amen. He came to reveal what? Genesis 1.26. Let us make man in whose image? In our image. <laughs> in our likeness. Yeah. Amen. Jesus, God did not say, oh, who? Hey, sorry, man. I tried, but it didn't work. No! <laughs> you are an image bearer of God. Amen. So, you see, I want you to understand something. The, uh, my, my phone, where is my phone? Right there here. Is somebody's yeah. recording it. Right that phone that Danny's holding, I bought it in Otsworen. I live in Otsworen. It's in the Western Cape. It's, you know, Otsworen, where all the ostriches come from. I think we took them here from the Kurger Park. We started yeah. big farms there in Otsworen. Anyway, I bought it in Otsworen. But the day that I take the phone from the shop, I did not say, hey, who's the manager here? And I go, high five. Hey, man, you are a clever man. Look, this is incredible. wonderful. No, no. I know that the phone, it did not start in the shop. Mm. It did not begin there. And when I read and I put my glasses, I said, oh, it was assembled in China. Mm. I don't think, hey, those Chinese people, they are so clever. Yeah. No, they did not design the phone. The phone did not begin in the factory. Yeah. It began in someone's mind. Yeah. You did not begin. What you're Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says, I knew you before I met you in your mother's womb. I formed you in your mother's womb. You know, it's more than one of the most powerful thoughts that we can have in our minds is that the God of creation, the engineer of the universe, knows me. And you know what? He loves me. You know why? Because he knows who you are. Amen. Even though he can do wrong things, he doesn't look, he looks at your heart, he knows, I have got treasure in this person. Amen. I've got this. And you see the mystery, Paul says in Colossians 1.27, he says the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations is now what? It's revealed. Yes. Where? It is Christ in the nations. Christ in the nations. Christ in you. It is the greatest discovery that you can ever make, is to find that Jesus is not hiding somewhere in the pages of the book. He is reflected there. So that I can see him. My eyes open. My Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, he says, Now with unveiled faces, we behold the glory of the Lord as in a mirror. That means I'm seeing something. Now I want to go back to the evil story. So the eagle is free. The official documents were stamped. On that date, the eagle would be transported from Pretoria Zoo yeah. to the freedom of these mountains. Mm. And they opened the cage. And they were holding their breath. Mm. But the eagle was just sitting there with sleepy eyes. Because in his mind, it was still in the cage. Mm. And you know what happened? After a few hours, suddenly, this eagle looked up. And his eyes go, what happens? He's hearing a familiar voice. He's hearing the coloring of another eagle. He hears that voice. When he hears that voice, he looks up and sees, there is another black eagle. Soaring, soaring. And what is he seeing? He's seeing the mirror. He says, 
That is me. That is me. You see, that's the freedom of the gospel. Not just when I read about old people who lived many years ago. Hey, sometimes I read, I can get very tired, I fall asleep. No, but when I read, I'm reading about me. You see, the whole Bible is about Jesus. Yeah. But the whole Jesus is about you. Amen. Amen. It's about you. You know, we sing, oh, you are holy, Lord. But he says, I've made you holy. Amen. But as welcome as Jesus is in my presence. Why? Because when he died, you died. Amen. You died. He says, reckon yourselves dead to whatever it was that kept your minds in the cage. See your freedom when you see Jesus. Amen. And you know what? When that happened, this eagle... You didn't need flying instructions. Okay, no, no, no. You haven't been flying for many years. You've been sitting in a cage. We'll take you slowly. Okay, first of all, you must just stretch your legs. And then you start... No, no, no. When he hears the voice of his true identity, he looks... Oh. The next thing, if you say, if that is me, then I can do what that eagle does. And he starts opening his wings. He takes off, he starts flying. Without flying lessons there, my friend Danny is a pilot. He knows how to fly an aeroplane. But you know, you can't just get into an aeroplane and fly. You've got to learn all the mechanics, how this thing works. But this eagle, he did not learn how to fly. How to gain altitude. No. How to get higher and higher. No. You know, we read many Christian books on 10 steps to do this and 15 steps to do that. But when we hear the truth, as it is in Christ, Amen. something ignites in us. Amen. The fire lights up. Ah! And we see this is me. Yeah. With unveiled faces. There's a little song, the same song we sang earlier on. And uh, I, I write it, it says, And now with unveiled faces, we behold your glory as in a mirror. <laughs> and now with unveiled faces, we behold your glory as in a mirror. You're my Father, my Redeemer. You've reconciled my life to be one with you again. You're my Father. Redeemer, you've reconciled my life to be one with you and now with unveiled faces. And now with unveiled faces, we behold your glory as in the mirror. You know, in the mirror Bible, I translated that verse I said in 2 Corinthians 3 The days of window shopping are over. <laughs> you know what window shopping is? When you get off, you go to Aikenhoek, or maybe you go to, to Whitbank, or to, uh, what, what is Whitbank's new name? Uh, or Nels Braid, and you go to see the shops, and you, you've got your money, because you've, you've saved some money. Now you go to walk, and you see all the shops, and what do you see? You see beautiful clothes, and you can imagine yourself wearing those clothes. You think, hey, I would like to wear that shirt, or that dress, or those shoes. And you imagine yourself, but you look at the price, you think, hey, look, I'll have to work some more. It's too much. So you have to go back, you work again. You go next time and say, hey, they've upped the price now. Oh, man, I'm in trouble. Because I want that, that's something. But all I can do is window shop. I can window shop. I can see something. I can desire it, but I can't have it. Because there's a price tag. What makes good news good news? Because it's news. It's already happened. It's not going to happen. We're not talking predictions. We're talking past tense. You see, when Jesus died, we died. Oh, sorry. When Jesus died, maybe you sit there. I won't step in. When Jesus died, we died. Zonk! We died. We were in Him. You see, we're not talking pirates. Pirates is too small. We're not talk, talk, talking church denomination. It's too small. We're not talking geography. We are not defined by our geography, mm. by our culture, mm. by our ethnic groupings. We are defined by Baba Wetu. One Father. Amen. One Father. We are the idea of God. I want you to know tonight that you are God's idea. Amen. You are maybe a shock to your parents. Maybe they are <laughs> oh, Whatever, you're pregnant. No, take a test again. No, you're pregnant, baby. You are pregnant. <laughs> God says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Wow. And because God knows you, He has gone to the extreme to die your death. Why? Not because Jesus had to persuade God, because Jesus has to persuade us about God. We have the inherited the futile ways of our fathers, says 1 Peter in chapter 1. He says, God redeemed us 
by the precious blood of Jesus from the futile ways, the thoughts that we inherited from our fathers. Because our fathers, they give us their tradition. They give us their religion. They give us whatever they can give us because they love us. But they've robbed us to know as we have been known. So Jesus has come to reveal who we are. And he's also come to redeem who we are. He paid the highest price. Not to buy us back from the devil. You must remember something. The devil is no one's father. He's the father of lies. <laughs> He's not the true legitimate father of one person on this planet. He's the father of lies. Jesus calls him. You're the father of lies. <laughs> There's only one Bible. I mean, we sing this song. Aganamanda. Hallelujah. Aganamanda. Usatane. <laughs> Jesus robbed him of his power. Yes. We need to understand something that happened in his death. Paul says in Colossians 2 that Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. You know what we do? We give the devil armor again. We give him weapons again. He's been defeated. Something happened on the cross when Jesus died. Because we are redeemed. If we understand what happened to us, we will not believe his lies anymore. You know, when that eagle started flying, he didn't go for five or six circles and said, Okay, oh, that was very nice. Now let me go back to the cage. <laughs> Sometimes our minds do that. Yeah. We see our freedom. We realize, you know, I was not created for a boss. I was created to reflect the image and the likeness of God. I carry this image in me. Jesus did not come to the earth to, to accuse us, to condemn us. He says, the Father judges no one. Mm. All judgment was given to the Son. Mm. And what did the Son do with all judgment? He took it upon himself. <coughs> he allowed his own creation to murder him. Mm. Why? Because he wants to persuade our minds. Mm. We have believed so many lies about ourselves. Mm. You remember Israel. When they were made, set free from Pharaoh. Remember they were slaves. Mm. They were set free from slavery. But in their minds, they remained slaves. Yeah. Mm. Ten out of the twelve leaders, remember, Moses said, okay, what we do, we have twelve um, tribes here, we will send one representative, not just a volunteer, a leader. And twelve leaders were sent into the promised land to spy the land. You see what happens when we just go around to spy the word of God with big question marks? The majority of the times we'll come back with bigger question marks. <laughs> Ten out of the twelve says, oh, you know, these promises are wonderful. But there are giants out there. Yeah. Oh, those giants are cool. They are so big. You know, when we compare ourselves to those giants, we become little dwarf-sized grasshoppers. We think, oh, you know, that's a very humble thing. No! It is an insult to the engineer of the universe who said, let us make man in our image, Amen. in our likeness. God did not make you a grasshopper. Amen. God did not say, okay, you know, this one... Sorry, man, they're born too far away from Jerusalem. So this one, hey, hey, sorry, man, this one will just be grasshopper. Maybe gradually we'll make him a grass. You know, we have domestic cats all over the world. <laughs> Sometimes I see on Facebook the people put the cat who's sitting in front of a mirror. And there's a big ngala, the lion sitting in the mirror. And we think that is the truth. It's not the truth. You cannot make a cat a lion. You know, maybe you should train the cat and say, Okay, now, cat, I want you to hear the roar of the lion. Oh, mm, oh, oh, oh. Okay, the cat says, Meow! 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 No, 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 it's not going to work. But we teach that from our Christian pulpits. We tell people, Oh, no, you are just a little kitten. And, and you know, when the lion sees you, it's going to bite you. But when we hear the truth, Jesus says, If you, if you follow my word, you'll discover with unveiled face. Amen. The who you are. Wow. Of who you are. Mm -hmm. How do they do you are? Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes our minds can trick us. It can lie to us. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we believe lies about ourselves like Israel. Mm -hmm. They believe their leaders. Their leaders told them, now remember, you're a grasshopper. They're the devil is a giant. Come on! Read the word. Was the cross a success or a failure? Mm -hmm. If the cross of Jesus was a success, what does make it of you? Mm -hmm. He conquered. He conquered on your behalf. He brought you out of death into victory, out of death into life, Amen. out of disease into health. He did it, Jesus did it on the cross because he died your death. So these people from Israel, they said, no, no, you can read Numbers 13 verse 33. You know, we are grasshoppers. 
by comparison. And the way you see yourself is the way you show yourself. So even the enemies that, ah, this guy said, no, it was not the truth. If you read on in Joshua chapter 2 verse 11, by this time the whole generation died. Why did they die? In Hebrews chapter 3 tells us they died because of unbelief. What was their unbelief? They believed a lie about themselves. Listen to me, church. Unbelief is not you doing something that, you know, the, the pagans, no, no, no. You can be in the church in Christianity. But while you believe a lie about you, you're insulting God. You believe a lie about yourself. They died, the whole generation died. So Joshua and Caleb, they were also two of the spies. But they saw the same giants, but with different eyes. You see, you are called to see with different eyes. And when they saw those giants, they said, we are well able to take the land. So after this generation died in unbelief, Joshua and Caleb said, we'll take, we'll take the, the children into the promised land. So Joshua sent out not twelve, two spies. Because the other ten lied. He sent two. Those two, they go into the walls of Jericho. They meet lady there. This lady sees, how ah, you guys, you are, you are tricking me. You are Jews. Because they had to camouflage. They had to hide. Because they are going to spy out. So they are Jews, but they are in camouflage. This lady says, you are Jews. Why are you here now? We heard, we, we pagans, we heard about your God saving you from slavery 40 years ago. We heard good news on your behalf, but you didn't believe it. Wow. She says, you know, when we heard that news, there was not one man amongst us, including the giants, not one. It wasn't shaking in his legs. Wow. Why? Because he realized we are defeated. Mm. The God of Israel, who defeated Pharaoh, has given them our land. We need to understand something about the land we're talking about. I'm talking about this land, your body. This is God's earth. You see, like the heavens are higher than the earth, says Isaiah 55. So are my thoughts higher than my thoughts, says God. And so you think, oh, you know, it's very really difficult to understand God. No, 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 read on. Isaiah 55 verse 9 says, Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Therefore your ways are not my ways. Mm. Mm. You see, we, while we're trying to change people's behavior, mm. we will always fail. Mm. It doesn't matter how hard we try, mm. we will always fail. Mm. Because we are thinking wrong. Mm. If we're thinking wrong, maybe we can do the right thing, but our minds are doing the wrong thing. Mm. Then we'll find ourselves going back to the old ways, mm. going back to the caged days, mm. to the zoo. I'll just sit in the zoo of my, of my church and of my religion and of my job and whatever it is that defines me. God calls us to freedom, to hear the voice of the free eagle, to hear about, oh, I was in Christ when he died my day. So this lady told him the good news. There was not one man amongst them that was not shaking. I want to encourage you tonight that the God of your creation, the engineer of the universe, is your father. Mm. He's not your judge. Mm. He's your father. Mm. John says, Jesus said, the father judges no one. Mm. You know in John chapter 12, Jesus says, now is the judgment of this world. Yep. What are you talking about? He says, now the ruler of this world is judged. How? When I am lifted up. How are you going to be lifted up, Jesus? Read on in John chapter 12. He speaks about what manner of death. When he was lifted up on the cross, just like Moses lifting up the serpent, you see, he became sin for us. He was lifted up so that we may see with new eyes and see not some historic reference to a Jesus who lived and died 2,000 years ago, but see how we were lifted up together with him. And everything that counted against us, every accusation, because that's what the word satanos means. Yeah. Satanos is accusation. Every condemnation was nailed to the cross. Amen. The fullness of the God, it was bodily nailed to the cross in him. Amen. All of humanity. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14, well, verse 12, sorry, verse 14. He says, the love of Christ constrains me. Yeah. Why? Because I'm convinced. I love a gospel that brings faith. No mm. doubt. Mm. This is because I'm convinced. Why? What are you convinced about, Paul? That when one died, all died. Mm. All died. Mm. So in the mind of God, in the faith of God, when Jesus died, who died? Oh. Mankind died. Mm. That's the good news. Mm. Hey, that's good news. 
I died when Jesus died. And when he went to hell, I was in him. He went into my hell. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8. Verse 7 says, He gave grace to each one of us according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Yeah. Verse 8 says, He led us as trophies, mm. as trophies wow. in His triumphant ascension on high. Wow. Wow. You know, when you, watch, when you watch the Olympic Games, then the people who win in their discipline, they get the gold medal. They get put on stage. They have their medal. They have their trophy. Maybe they were just a few seconds faster than the one with the silver medal was a few seconds faster than the one with bronze. Sometimes we think Jesus, you know, he won the victory for just a few of us. You know, he was a little bit faster than the devil. No, no, no. <laughs> Jesus put the devil out of business. Yeah. Out of business. Yeah. Out of the competition. Yeah. Because he died to manage his death. Yeah. This is the truth of the gospel that sets us free yeah. to be free indeed. Yeah. Oh, so when, when we're going back to Isaiah 55, yeah. I must rest to that. In Isaiah 55, he says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Therefore, your ways are not my ways. But read the next verse, Isaiah 55, verse 10. He says, as the heavens... Oh, no, verse, that was verse 8, verse 9 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my thoughts higher than your thoughts, and my ways than your ways. And you know what we do? We read it and we say, Hey, we cannot understand the thoughts of God. We close the book. Hey, read the next verse. Get, when you read the Bible, get to the good news. Yes. Don't stop at the bad news. Yeah. Because Jesus is what God believes about you. Yeah. It's not what we believe or a million other people believe. Or all the Christians on TV, on Christian TV. It's not what man believes, it's what God believes. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the faith of God. Amen. Jesus is what God believes about you. <laughs> ha, so verse 10 says, hey, hold on. You think, the heavens, the earth, hey, it's too far. We can take the, the highway to go to Cape Town. But hey, who can climb this ladder? It's too high. It's too high to the heavens. The next verse says, but, God, what? but, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven. Oh, the good news is, whatever the distance was, it is now cancelled. Why? Because the rain is doing something. It is on a mission to awaken the Ibeu. The rain awakens the seed. You don't need to teach a marula tree to be a marula tree. Because it's in the seed. And we are born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. It was made flesh in Jesus. Not as in a window shop or a display window, but as in a mirror. So that we may know, even as we have always been known. This is who I am. I'm not trying to act. I know who I am. When I discover me, I'm free. Amen. When I discover me, I'm free. Amen. Amen. So the next verse is, as the rain and the snow come down to earth, to saturate the earth. You see, when Jesus became flesh, he didn't just become flesh in his left hand or in his right hand. His entire body, his mind, his soul, his entire being was flooded with the fullness of God. You know, often when it's not full moon, when it's dark moon, we see many, many stars. You must take your binoculars and your mind goes, Whoo! I cannot even measure the light years, the distances of the galaxies of the universe. Yeah. But you know, the heavens cannot measure God. Yeah. You cannot measure temperature with the ruler. Mm. Mm. Yeah. When you go yeah. to school, they give you a ruler. You cannot measure how, how hot is it today. You will not get the reading. It's the wrong instrument. You will not measure the heart of God with the law. It's the wrong instrument. Jesus is the heart of God. Amen. 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 He is the fullness of God. The fullness of the God in bodily. You see, Jesus didn't come to planet Earth in a Spider-Man suit. Or in Superman suit. No, no. He was a man just like us. Because in our skin, he saved us. He rescued us. He redeemed us. So that we may know, even as we have always been known. That's the good news. Amen. We'll introduce ourselves again. I want to close with this beautiful story. Where is my water? Is this mine here? Thank you, Jesus. I can say I'm not going to have everything. I'll send it around. Amen. If you want water, you're welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. You know where I live there in Oxford? There is a very beautiful true story. A lady who was the grandmother of a family that we know very well. She was engaged to marry a farmer in Oxford. This man who was a farmer 
of ostrich. And in those days, more than 80 years ago, almost 90 years ago, and even 100 years ago, the ostrich, the feather of the ostrich was worth more than rhino horn. I'm telling you now. Ostrich was the most expensive article, more than gold, more than rhino horn. That ostrich feather. So the people became very wealthy because, they, you know, the ostrich feather, you can put a lot of ostrich feathers in a crate, send it to Europe. You get paid lots of money. So this lady, it's a true story, she was engaged to marry one of the richest farmers in South Africa. And while she was engaged to marry this man, you know, they would go, she had a golden, we made a, a golden, they didn't have motor cars, but they had horse carts. But the horse cart was covered in gold. The diamond was too heavy for the re massive Makulu diamond. And they would go to all the grand functions, you know, to the members of parliament. And they were, they were dressed very well because, you know, they were very wealthy. So they were very highly recognized in society. But while she had this in in engagement with her, with her future husband, she had an encounter with Jesus. And this woman's life is just ignited with the revelation of Christ, not in history, but Christ in me. And the husband to be, he was embarrassed. He says, no man, this is not good for business. I will divorce this lady. Give me back your ring. He sent her off. So this lady, she goes to the free state. Two or three years later, she falls in love with a farm worker. This man had no money. She marries this man. He was working on another man's farm. She marries this man. He was a Nogia. After seven years, they buy that farm. <laughs> Shortly after they bought the farm, they had the title, I know the family very well. Shortly after they bought the farm, the first gold was discovered in the free state on their farm. <laughs> but it was a maize farm. <laughs> For generations, people look at that land, they say, ah, it's maize. We can just eat it, that, that is very nice, we make pop with the maize. So they, they, all the, the, the only way they could look at the farm was it is maize. Matthew 13 verse 44 says that the kingdom, Matthew 13 verse 44, write that down, Matthew 13, verse 44. Jesus says, the kingdom of God is like an agricultural field. Mm. You know when you look at an agricultural field, whatever it is that you could produce on that field, whether it be cows, or milk, or wine, mm. or maize, whatever you can produce, that is the value of the land. But Jesus shocks them, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that is hidden in the field <laughs> so they are listening they say because they are jewish farmers they are jewish businessmen when they hear ha, ha, hoo, hoo, there is more to the field than what we thought mm. there is something hidden in this field mm. that gives it a complete new value mm. wow. i'm not looking at whether the field is cultivated or neglected mm. it doesn't matter how cultivated it was it doesn't matter how neglected it was mm. it's the gold that it carries and even today you can go on google <coughs> 22% of the entire world's gold comes from the Welcome area. Wow. That is the farmers in Urendals Rust is on that reef of gold. 22% of 90, 100 years later, it's still the best producing gold. And she wrote a document. That old mother, that old... Ma uh, Oma, Granny, Ngogo, she write, you know, for many years, we have seen this land as an agricultural field, but it's a gold mine. And she says, the day will come when everybody will discover the gold that they can. <laughs> Jesus came to reveal something about you, humanity. Humanity, you carry the gold. It is not Christ hiding in the history of the book or the pages of the book, but he's mirrored there. 